Yo, what's going on guys? It's Gminers here and in this video I'm going to be going over how to do both of the Sparrow Flying and the Infinite Slipstream techs in Destiny 2 which tend to be the most too popular techs that people like to learn. Looking over at Sparrow Flying first, this is super easy. I'd say it's a 2 out of 10 in overall difficulty. It took me about 10 minutes to learn. The keybinds are super easy to understand and super straightforward and mastering the inputs doesn't take long at all. And then infinite slipping on the other hand is much more of like an eight or nine out of 10 in total difficulty. This took me around three to four weeks to really get down. So that's gonna be a much more difficult tech overall. Real quick, before we do get into either of the techs, there's one thing that you will absolutely need, which is going to be a sparrow with the perk destabilizers on it. This allows you to hold shift and then W, A, S, and D to roll and maneuver the sparrow in air. That's it, that's all you actually need. However, the Sparrow Always on Time, which is the exotic Sparrow from Scourge of the Past, does have this first perk, I believe, which gives it an extra boost, which can be used as an extra dodge, which is super useful for the techs in this video and super useful for learning. So if you are going through this process, I highly recommend picking this Sparrow up if you don't already have it. If you need to pick it up, just head to the tower at this exotic archive. You can go in here and then it should be under the Forsaken Exotics right here as the last option. It's definitely extremely expensive, but also definitely worth it if you have all the other exotics that are within the meta in the game already. So make sure to pick that up as well. And then the very, very last thing is that now as of this season, we do have uh, some keybinds if you are on keyboard and mouse for the Sparrow. So you can scroll down to the vehicle section. And then at the very bottom, we now have dodge left and dodge right, which you can do with different keybinds. So typically the stock inputs are going to be double tapping A and double tapping D to dodge to the left and right, which I'm gonna be doing in this video because that's how I learned. But some people do like to set these to Q and E as alternative keybinds. I have Q set to my grenade and E is uh, one of my interacts, but when you're on the Sparrow, it will still override it. So you can have dual keybinds so there's nothing you really need to worry about with that. So with all of that out of the way, I do now have my keybinds on. So you can see when I'm pressing W, A, S, and D here, just so that you guys can see the inputs yourself that I'm doing, you're gonna wanna head over to Nessus, down to the Cistern to do all of the practicing for both of these techs. Okay, first things first, you're gonna spawn in here on the Cistern. And the place that I like to personally practice Sparrow flying is jumping out like this. I would sometimes turn and just practice over here. And the reason I do that is because I have a lot of height from where I start over here to down here and off the map. That's where I personally like to practice, but I'm gonna just do it right here because I already know how to Sparrow fly. So it's gonna be easier for me to get the combo off. And that way you can see a wall here. So you can see my actual progress going up and down. Step number one with Sparrow flying, very simple. Jump up, wait till you're at like the apex of your jump and then summon your Sparrow. After your Sparrow is out, this is when destabilizers are going to have an effect. So you're going to want to rotate when you're in the air. Personally, I like rotating counterclockwise this way. Now, you just saw that I rotated very slowly. And the reason for that is as soon as we get to the top and we start rotating, we're going to throw in our first dodge input to the right if you spin counterclockwise like I do, which is going to be when this side of the Sparrow is pointing up. And that will in turn boost me upwards. So that looks something like this, just like that. So all we're gonna do after that is keep the rotation going. It won't kick us off. And then we're going to also throw in dodges to the left, dodges to the right again, and so on and so forth. The most important thing to learn when sparrow flying is that you need to let go of your shift key or destabilizers in the air. This is what happens if I try to throw in the dodges to the right and to the left while holding destabilizers. You can see the inputs go through. That was very quick, but I just kept falling. If I let go of my destabilizer key, this is now what happens. Rotate, dodge to the right, dodge to the left, dodge to the right, left, right, left. Now, as you'll also see, if you pay attention to my keybinds once again, when I'm rotating, I'm not doing a hold to rotate. It's a lot more of a shift and a tap style rotation. You don't want to rotate too fast, so for me, I'm just tapping shift and A most of the time. And even some cases where my rotation is going too fast, like here, I might just let the Sparrow whip around and not even add to the rotation. Obviously you are only going to have five or six dodges depending on if you have always on time or not. So 
that's going to really limit your height and how high you can fully go. I moved over here because there's kind of a, a skybox limit. But what I'm going to show is how you can chain multiple sparrow flies together. So all you're going to do is jump up, do everything like normal. Again, we're just tapping to keep our rotation going. And then when I get here, I'm going to jump off and then re-summon my sparrow. I'm going to get six new dodges and I can just keep going upwards. Super easy to do, super easy to chain together. Should only take you about 10 to 30 minutes to learn this overall. And uh, that's pretty much it. Also, real quick, before we get into how to slipstream, if you guys do find this video useful and it does help you out, make sure to drop a like and sub down below. I think as of right now, 85% of you guys that watch these videos aren't actually subscribed. It's completely free and it helps me out a ton. Okay, assuming that you guys have now kind of mastered your sparrow flying or at least gotten that down to like a 70 to 90 percent success rate we are now going to be moving on to the infinite slipstream which is the harder tech to cover in this video and again that is going to be different from a regular slipstream a normal slip is just using a vertical drop to go a horizontal distance and it looks something like this Infinite Slipstream is going to be much more for going a horizontal distance while also maintaining your height. Looks something like this and has a much more advanced set of inputs. As I just kind of showed you, you can always just practice from this original location. However, I'm going to be showing you how to get on top of the red area over on Nessus, which is technically out of bounds. But if you don't like practicing on either of these two locations, another common spot that people will practice so that they can learn is over across the Hellmouth, right? I think right here on the map, if you spawn in Sorrows Harbor, come down here, there is a rock that you can slip off of and cross the entire Hellmouth, which is a good spot to practice as well. To get up there, all you need to do is know how to sparrow fly. You can sparrow fly from here to here, or you can just go down here and jump over as well. I'm just going to well skate because that's faster. Just take this first launch pad or portal or whatever you want to call it to this second area, and then we're going to end up at that third one. Now that you've reached this one, this is going to take you down there, which you don't really want to have happen. There is a way that you can sit down here and climb all the way up the wall, but what you want to do is end up over here, and we're going to be doing that by sparrow flying. To do this, all you need to do is hop in the portal facing the side like I am right here, and you're going to instantly start sparrow flying up as quickly as you can. Should look something like this. You can then hop off on a skate over. And then now that we're in this giant red open area, the last step you want is to get that extra bit of height by going up top here, and we're just going to do that with normal sparrow flying. Now that we are officially up here, the place you're going to be doing the slipstream is off of this ledge. However, I'm going to be breaking this down so that you can see all of the core mechanics and how everything fits together on an ideal slipstream. And then after that, I'm going to be going over all of the idiosyncrasies and things that you're probably going to struggle on, like where to look, how to chain multiple slips together, why you're going too far to the left, too far to the right, and other things that are going to improve your slip performance. Step number one, all you're going to do is go off of this ledge and then we're going to hold shift and then also S and we're going to start performing a backflip to around the point where we're 60 degrees back. It should look something like this. That should be the angle that you're searching for. And then for step number two, we are going to be switching from holding shift and S to shift and A. You also should not let go of shift while doing it. And again, we're swapping once we hit that 60 degree angle in our backflip to a side flip and it should look something like that. Your main goal is to land your sparrow so that it is upside down and pointing to the left. And then the very, very last step of this first repetition that you're doing is you're going to dodge to the left like so. So with everything put together, we throw our backflip, side flip, dodge. And you can see we kind of go wonky in the air like that. So now we're going to go over how you can actually chain multiple of these together. After this, chaining multiple of these reps in a slipstream together is what's going to make it actually hard. So the first thing you're going to want to do is throw in holding S after you do your dodge. And this is going to be without shift. And it's just going to pull your sparrow back to keep your rotation kind of normalized. It should look something like this. You can see I pull back here. And I kind of start already getting into the process of going into my second slip rotation. After this step, we are just transferring from holding S to shift A and S to get that full rotation to come back around. And then we throw in another dodge and it should look something like this. Now, 
Now, you obviously just saw me do multiple, multiple reps. If you're doing this for the first ever time, this is going to be your main first barrier to get over, which is chaining a few of these back to back to back so that you can actually control your rotation in midair. So you're definitely going to want to stop, practice this. And then after that is when we are going to work on getting multiple of these sets pieced together, like where you saw me run out of dodge, wait for it to come back and then start slipping again. I'm going to show you an example of that right now. So I'm going to do a full set right here. You can see me slipping like so. And then I run out of dodge, so I can't keep going. And I'm going to kind of idle in the air, wait for my boost to come back, and then go right back into slipping. That is literally all the inputs for the infinite slipstream. Now I'm going to go over the idiosyncrasies and reasons that you're probably failing a slip, things that are going wrong, and you're saying, why is it doing this versus why is it doing that? So first things first, one of the most important things is actually going to be your initial setup. I know I went over that kind of quickly, but if you have a bad setup like this, you can see I'm instantly dodging kind of down and to the right. Your initial setup makes a huge, huge difference. So I've spent personally probably two or three days just getting that mastered myself. A very common issue to run into is pulling too far to the right or too far to the left, which is going to come from two issues. As I mentioned, first is going to be your initial setup and the angle you have there. And then the second thing will also be the dodge timings that you have. So real quick, just to over exaggerate the setup, if I don't throw enough backflip in and then just go to the side like that, that would be when I'm pulling too far to the right. That means I need more S is what we would say. Otherwise I need to throw more of a backflip. If I have way too much of a backflip, that would be when I'm pulling to the left. You can see that angle is going hardcore to the left as well. So if you're going to the left, you need less S and more A. When it comes to the timing of your dodge, let's say you have a perfect setup. If I dodge late, you can see my sparrow immediately kind of starts going up and to the left, which is normal in the rotation. That's just the rotation that we're using. And then once again, dodging too early, this will also make you go to the left. However, it will also kind of push you down because you're dodging too early in the rotation. So your sparrow is coming under and then pointing down when you're dodging. So that's gonna be an even bigger issue as to why you might be losing height and another reason why you'll be going to the left. The second major issue that you're gonna run into, let's just say you've perfected your first initial set of slips and everything is perfect at this point. You're gonna run into an issue where you go for your second set and you just aren't getting the rotation to work out so that you're slipping at the same angle again. This would look something like this. Again, this is my first kind of set is what I'm just calling it. And then you might just find that your Sparrow kind of goes out of control or whatever. In some cases, this is going to happen with additional inputs that you're probably doing that you're not aware, or in other cases, it might just happen automatically. The major fix that I've seen for this that other people have actually recommended to implement in my own slip is aiming slightly to the left. And you can kind of do this during the whole slip if you want to, uh, which I probably do naturally, or right after your first set, you can aim to the left to keep that rotation going. So it should look something like this. And then I'll aim slightly to the left and then I can get my rotation back after my dodges come in. After you get pretty decent at chaining multiple sets together, I think the only major issue that you're going to run into is if you need more speed or you need more height. So the first thing I did want to mention, if you look up in my top right, you should see my frame rate is at around 80 to 100 during most cases, maybe going down to 70 and frame rate makes a big difference on Sparrow Tech. So if I go into my settings, you're gonna see that I have a frame rate cap set to 40 and 30 is even better, but the lower FPS you have, the less gravity you're going to have applied to you while on your Sparrow. This means you can worry more about going forward than worrying about maintaining your height. So you're gonna see it becomes way easier for me to just kind of fly on 40 FPS. I'm gonna end up going way further things are going to be way more casual and I'm going to have way less gravity. The other way that I have seen people kind of micromanage their speed and distance is implementing something like a wave like pattern where you start high, swing down low and then go high at the end of a set so that you maintain your height. You're kind of going upwards and then start falling later when you're getting your boosts back and then you kind of curve back down, get your speed back and then curve back up to get that height. So that should look something more like this.
gonna curve down, focus on going forward, and then use that boost right there to kind of go up. Again, I'm going forward, and then up, forward, and then up a bit more at the end. I am by no means the best person at doing this. I learned last season, I got it down decently quickly and just wanted to share a different style guide with you guys because I did just go through the process of learning things and it was all super fresh in my mind. So I wanted to share that. But if you guys do want to post clips, ask questions, check in with people who are much better than I am and get some tips and tricks for making your infinite slip, regular slip, sparrow flying, any sparrow tech better, there'll be a link in the description to the 4-clan discord literally just post in their sparrow discussion they have a channel for slipstream and infinite slipstream help so literally just post there and you're gonna get a ton of responses from those guys at how to make your slip better and what you're doing right versus wrong i do also stream a bunch over on my twitch so if you guys want you can always ask me questions there i do also have a discord server that you can ask in the help or the questions channels as well anyways that's all for this video guys as always have a good one peace